when it comes to storing ammo, there are a lot of different options, some being better than others. When you store ammo, you have one thing in mind, and that's pretty much just to protect your ammo from the elements. And to do that, you need to store it in an airtight container. Some people will just buy a box of ammo and leave it on the shelf. That's really not a great idea, just leaving it out like that, because the moisture will get to it eventually. So you want to get an airtight container. When it comes to containers, there are metal cans and plastic cans. And I will say the metal cans are definitely the better option and I will explain why. A metal ammo can is a lot more durable than plastic. Obviously metal is more durable than plastic, but let me show you something. When you put your ammo in a can, it's going to weigh the can down and stretch it out. For example, this plastic can here. If I was to pull on top of this can to simulate some weight in it, I can push in the side and get my hand inside. Now obviously this means that it's not airtight and the moisture is going to be getting in, meaning it doesn't really have a great seal. Now when it comes to a metal can, for example, this uh, surplus can, I can push pull on it and I'm not getting my hand in there. It's going to have a nicer seal. Now I'm not saying these plastic cans aren't any good, you can uh, use them to store other stuff. For example, in a can like this, I just store miscellaneous things, you know, extra mags, maybe some gloves, mag holder. You can use them to store holsters as well. And small ones like this, you could use to take ammo to the range. And this one here, I have some snap caps for training and extra batteries for flashlights and red dots. Another thing not great about plastic ammo cans is the lock. Now this lock just isn't the greatest, it really doesn't take that much to open them. If they get caught on something they might open by accident and spill your ammo all over the place, especially in a large box like this you could store easily a thousand rounds in it and uh, that gets pretty heavy it's probably gonna be around 30 extra pounds of weight and you would not want that falling out so now that we've decided that metal ammo cans are the way to go not all metal ammo cans are made the same for example there's different manufacturers these cans you see here with the markings are GI cans I bought from military surplus shops. They're built to military specifications. And then you have a can like this, which I got from Walmart. These may look the same, they have the same design, but they're not quite made the same. Just by feeling them, you can tell that the ones from Walmart are a little bit cheaply, a little bit cheaper made. The metal seems a little thinner and the latch isn't quite as strong. This is a GI can and this is a Walmart can. I don't know if you can tell there, but... Just by the lock there, kind of springs open on the Walmart one and uh, GI one opens and you kind of have to push a little bit more and if you listen to the latches here, there's not really any click, audible click to that. You can kind of hear it just, you know, just kind of goes down. And the GI can snaps down there and uh, I'm pulling with the same force. I'm pulling with the same exact force. The Walmart one opens, the GI can doesn't. You need more force to get that one open. So you can tell they're definitely not made to the same spec. Harbor Freight also makes their own cans too. Again, they're not quite the same quality. They're definitely better than plastic ones, but the GI cans definitely are the best. You can get these at military surplus shops and um, the, it, the prices will vary. The place I went to, they were selling them for $15. I've seen um, some shops sell them for $25 or up, yeah, $20 and up which definitely is more expensive. $15 is a really great price. 
These Walmart cans and uh, Harbor Freight cans go from like 10 to $12 or so. So a little bit cheaper. If you can find these for 15, just get these over the Walmart cans. They're just better quality. Some other places like Cabela's also sells um, ammo cans of their own now. This is a Cabela's can. And I will say the build quality on this is actually really solid. Um, has a really good snap and definitely better quality than the Walmart cans. They just feel they just feel a little bit thicker. The Walmart cans, when you push on them, you can feel that they're a little bit a little bit uh, more flimsy than the surplus cans or even this Cabela's can here. An example of the quality of these, this is a GI can and this is another different Walmart can. As you can see on here, the latch is nice and flat to the, um, nice and flat to the box. And, you know, requires you to really get down there and open it up. This is one from Walmart that um, kind of just shows an example of the quality of these being not as good. You can see the, um, you can see the latch here. It's kind of bulging out a little bit and you can press it down. You can just kind of see that not quite as good and really requires no force at all to get it open. I mean, my pinky <laughs> springs it open without any force and clicking it down. You kind of hear a little like crank of the metal there. Just really doesn't sound great. And, uh, yeah, so definitely be careful buying the Walmart ones. Make sure the latches are good if you are buying them instead of the GI cans. But uh, just be careful with these because not only is this just not great and doesn't provide a good seal, but if you're really carrying this around, I mean, you can barely just touch that and the whole thing will fall down. So really just not ideal. If you were to buy a metal, a metal ammo can from a surplus store, there's a few things you want to check. You want to make sure that the can is in decent shape. So it's not rusted, the latch is good, the handle's good, yeah the latch is good when you open it up. You want to inspect the rubber seal and make sure it's in pretty good shape as well. Now they're not going to be new obviously they're surplus but you know some can definitely be in better shape than others. Now what you can do is you can rub some oil on, just rub some gun oil on this rubber and um, help preserve it because the rubber will break down over time. Rubbing a little bit of oil there will not only make it have a better seal, but it will help preserve that rubber for a little bit. So make sure the rubber is in good shape as well. And also make sure it shuts nicely without uh, any hiccups or anything like that. Something I do with all my ammo cans is add these little silica packets to them. I'm sure you've seen these so many times before they come in clothes, socks, you know, shoes. They're moisture absorbing desiccant packs. You've seen them everywhere before. Now you can either save these up over time or what I did was just, I bought a bulk pack of it on Amazon. This is like 120 packs for a few dollars, which really isn't really isn't too expensive. A few bucks and you get over a hundred of these packs. It's really good. I always put at least one or two in my ammo cans. Now, some people might say it's a little bit too much. They wouldn't even, uh, that they don't they don't put desiccant packs in. A lot of people do though, and I would recommend it because um, it's just a little extra effort you put in. It doesn't cost that much especially when you compare it to the cost of ammo. It just helps keep the moisture out. For example, this is full of nine millimeter. You could fit a thousand rounds in here. And when it comes to 5.56, five, you could also fit nearly a thousand rounds or so into the can. And a thousand rounds of nine millimeter right now is anywhere from three to $400 for just training ammo, cheapest you can get, probably around $300. 5.56, five, it's going to be, what, like $600 for a thousand rounds. So, a few dollars to buy 120 of these and just throw a couple in them. But, you know, a couple would be a few cents worth of this just to protect hundreds of dollars worth of ammo. I just think it's a no-brainer at that point. Just go that extra little effort 
to protect your ammo from moisture. If you have a good ammo can with a good seal and the silica packets in there, that ammo will last hundreds of years and, and still stay in the same condition, stay dry. That's how good this stuff is. It will last that long. And now when it comes to actually how you store it in the can, uh, some people have different methods. For me, I just keep it very simple. I just keep it in the box in, uh, in the little trays they, they have. That's really all I do. Uh, it keeps it pretty organized. The boxes stack really nice in there. Uh, some people some people will say that you shouldn't keep it in the cardboard because the cardboard absorbs the moisture. The foam trays they're in will also absorb moisture. Now they do absorb moisture, but it's really not that much, especially if you add the silica packets in. It's really not a problem at all. There's a couple reasons I do like to keep them in the cardboard boxes, and it's because they are, uh, it's, it stays organized, stays nicer to stack, and it tells me all the information I need. Some people will put them in their own trays or just throw them loose in the can itself, just have a thousand rounds of loose ammo. Now, if that's the same brand and the same grain, same everything, that's probably fine if you mark it and stuff, but I like, um, but if not, if you just are buying boxes every so often and storing them, I would recommend keeping them in the box just because you can actually check everything on here. So it's by Federal, it's nine millimeter, 115 grain FMJ. I have all the information I need there. Usually uh, it will tell you the feet per second as well. You have all the information you need. Maybe the ammo doesn't work that well for you. Well, you'll know what brand it was. Also, uh, about a year ago or so, I had some herders and a Winchester white box there. I'm pretty sure Winchester makes herders, but there was a recall on the ammo. Right, to check if your ammo is affected by the recall, you could actually check the code that was written on the box. And uh, I was able to see that my ammo was not affected by the recall and was still good to use. Now, if I had dumped all my ammo out into a can itself, then I wouldn't have known if the ammo was affected by the recall or not, but because I kept it in the box, I could check all the information I had about it. And that's why I recommend just keeping it in the box. It's organized and you get to see all of the statistics on the ammo and uh, basically what you're shooting. Now, when it comes to shotgun ammo, um, there's, <laughs> when it comes to shotgun ammo, there's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more difficult only because shotgun ammo is a lot harder to store. Obviously a box of five, you know, shotgun shell is going to be a lot larger than other ammo. So while well, you might be able to store a thousand rounds of nine millimeter, you might only be able to store maybe 150 rounds in a, uh, in a can of shotgun. Right, let's say you had a thousand shotgun shells. Well, you probably need like six cans or something like that. You could store it loose, but again, like I said, I just like to keep them in the, the boxes themselves so I can actually, uh, to see exactly what I'm shooting. So uh, some people buy some different, some certain plastic cans. I know MTM makes a, a really big, uh, like flat ammo box uh, uh plastic that it's uh it's a lot easier to store shotgun shells some people like that but i would just say stick to the metal stick to the metal ammo cans i mean it works extremely well it's the, definitely the best way to store the ammo yeah you're gonna have to buy a lot of cans to store to store all your shotgun ammo but you know what that's fine you can never have too many of these cans you can always use it for other calibers um but yeah for shotgun ammo it's tough, but you just have to buy a bunch of cans for that. Before I forget, you can also buy these small, um, these small 30 caliber cans. So these would be considered your 50 cal cans, the bigger ones. And this is a 30 caliber can. And they're really nice and small. They're pretty nice to store stuff or just take to the range maybe because it's a little bit smaller. Now when it comes to labeling the can, uh, you could do a couple different things as you could see on here uh, These mean a certain thing. So 762 NATO M80 ball. It's gonna be on links here And this would be linked 50 cal. Obviously I'm not storing well You could store 50 cal in here, but I'm not storing 50 cal in here and I'm not storing 762 NATO in here So what I can what I do is 
It's pretty simple, really nothing special. I just cut out a little piece of paper. I just cut out a little piece of paper, write the caliber, so 22LR, and then I tape it over. I don't even make it neat. I mean, it really doesn't need to be. Like this can as well, I just write 308 on there and just tape it right on there. Uh, you can also do this masking tape. I wrote 12 gauge on there. The masking tape, I just sticked it on there. Um, now the masking tape doesn't actually uh, stay on as nicely as like clear tape and the paper. It can like tear off easier, but I haven't had a problem yet with it, so we'll see. Now what you can also do, if you want to get real fancy, is print out a label yourself and you can put it on. And you can put it on the latch too. Now it all depends how you're going to store the ammo. So if you were to stack the ammo on top of each other, because they do have... They do have uh, a bottom part for stacking them up. Then uh, you would obviously want to stack it on the latch, not the top, because well, you wouldn't be able to see the top. Um, you can see you would have to be able to look at the latch, or you could store it on the, or you could uh, put it on the side too, depending on how you store it. Now, if you want to store it underneath a bed or a couch or something like that, then you could just label it right on the top. You could pull it out from under. You could see the label, and then you could put it back like that. And that's how I label the cans, but you can do it other ways. That's basically what I have to go over for storing ammo. All right, so leave a comment, and I would like to know how you guys store your ammo, and maybe if you have any extra tips or pointers. I mean, when it comes to this stuff, it's pretty easy. Um, it's pretty easy to do. So go ahead and like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more. I'll see you next time.